We have our table ready to go. The next thing that we want to do is try and make uh, a similar kind of map that maps our confirmed cases. Now, in this, just like this map, instead of being aggregated by country, we have individual locations. So to start, we're going to just reload this, um, our data frame and remind ourselves of what we're going to be working with. So each observation is a place. We do have a latitude and longitude for every one of these. And confirm deaths recovered active and a shorthand abbreviation for the place itself. So what we'll do is make a map and plot each of these individual observations, make a little marker that whose size is based on the number of confirmed cases. And if we click on it, we get information about what the name of the place is, as well as the specifics about the number of confirmed cases. This will actually be much easier than it sounds using a library called Folium. Um, great library. If you're using Colab, it's already in here. If you're working locally, just do a quick pip install Folium, and you'll be all set to go. So first is just making a basic map. And the way that we'll do this is to use Folium's uh, map class. And this takes, it, it actually, we can create a map without any arguments. Um, and it will just show us a world map. But we could also center it at a given location. So let's start with what we have as a latitude and longitude pair from this first value in our data frame here. Um, in Abbeville, North Carolina. So we'll copy this latitude and then we'll grab this longitude. Okay, and you see that now we're centered at Abbeville. We can add a couple of things here. We can make it look a little different. We can add some style with the tiles argument. So to make it black and white, we can use this stamen toner. Uh, we can also change how zoomed in it is at the start. So if we use a smaller number, it'll be more zoomed out. So if we start at four, now we get a bigger kind of view here. And finally, we want to save this actually as an object because we're going to do things. We're going to populate it with uh, little marker objects next. So once we have our basic map, exactly, we want to go ahead and now add markers to it. So we can do this with a... Um, with a circle. And again, we have to provide a location, which we'll use the same, we'll use the same location as we did above. All right, we'll use this same location. And we also have to provide a radius. So here, we'll just make the radius equal to 100 um, to view this first. Now, after executing this, all we've done is create a circle object. We haven't actually put it on the map. So to put it on the map, we also have to add this thing to that map M. And now if we look at our map, we have a little dot here um, in Abbeville. So if we changed our initial zoom, maybe we zoom in a little bit more, and we could make this um, stand out a bit. I think that by making it maybe red and making sure that we fill it, we'll have a little different view. Okay, there we go. And 100 doesn't seem to be very big, so maybe 1,000. Still doesn't. Now, what we want to do is actually do this for every point. And the other thing is we want to make it have a clickable pop-up. So right now, when I click on this, nothing is happening. All we have to do to add a pop-up, though, is this is just another argument um, in the circle. So if we say pop-up equals um, confirmed.
now if we click on this, we see that we're displayed the contents of the string that we entered in that pop-up argument. All right, and this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to um, use the argument from the data about how many confirmed cases there are. So that's how we add a single circle. The big idea here is that we're going to write a function that we can apply to every row of this data frame, pick off the latitude and longitude, confirmed cases, and abbreviation for the name of the place, and place a marker on our map um, at that place. All right, so I'll call the function that will do that circle maker. And it'll take in what eventually will be four objects. This is going to be a collection of four objects. The latitude, longitude, number of confirmed cases, and abbreviation of the uh, town or name of the town. So these things will be indexed just like a normal Python object. So our location will be the first and second element of, um, of this collection X. So we'll add a circle at those two things. So X0 and X1. That'll be our latitude and longitude. Okay, so that's our starting location. And now um, what we'll do is we will make the radius of the circle equal to the third um, argument that we'll make sure is a float. And we'll even we'll multiply this thing by 10 because it seems that we need to have a large value to get anything out of a radius here. So we'll try to see what it looks like when we multiply it by 10. Last thing is that we want the pop-up. So we'll do a similar thing. We'll say confirmed cases. And then we'll input this variable. And last, we'll add this circle to the map, okay? So now we're just doing the same thing that we did above, except we're going to expect um, more general things. We're going to expect every latitude and longitude value to be the first and second element of the things passed to this function. The radius will be the number of confirmed cases or the third element passed to this function. And the name of the town will be the fourth thing passed to this function. So once we have this defined, all we have to do to use it is apply it to that slice of this data frame that we're interested in. So first we'll subset um, our data frame based on those four columns that we, we said. We want latitude, longitude, confirmed, and uh, the abbreviation of the town is combined key. All right. And what we want to do is we want to apply that function. So we're going to apply. And the way that I'm going to apply this is with a lambda. And this will just, this is essentially going and grabbing each row here. And we're going to pass that row to the circle maker function. The last thing is I have to tell this what axis to do this over, and this is axis equals one. All right, so it'll apply it along each of these rows. After we do that, we should have a map. Hopefully what we have is a map. Um, you know, I got back none because I didn't actually put a return statement in this function. So by default, the function returns none. So we see all of these nuns spit back. There's really nothing to return. All that was important was that we took the action of adding that point to the map. But if we look at our map now, it'll take a second to, to draw because there's a lot more data on it. But sure enough, we've got points all over the place in our map. It seems that there is data for coronavirus um, at many locations. And if we click on them, Uh, actually, right, so we've got our, our I have. 
I've got some adjustments to make. I'm, right now, I have the name of the place. Um, I also want to have it be, so instead of confirmed cases um, and printing the name of the place, I probably want to print the name of the place first. Skip a line and then say the number of confirmed cases. So I'll just add into this. This X3 is the name of the place. The third thing in the list, or X2, is the confirmed cases. So we'll just do this again. Okay, and that's great. Now we've got everything we need for our map. All right, we can, and again, what we can do is we can adjust this so that our markers are uh, more in line with what we were looking for. But that's that's all it takes to just this little bit of code to generate that map with all of the data um, on the confirmed cases and the location.